We are at The Hub in Sleaford, where we are having one final filming day on Shadows of a Stranger. We have our blue screen, our mini blue screen set up, and we're having an extras day, um, bringing in lots of people to, uh, to populate our environments. Now this very room is where we held our casting sessions uh, two years ago now, and it was on, on a couple of cold winter's days that we were up here with our late friend James Aubrey. Now recently we've been reflecting on Jimmy um, and I've been talking to some of the cast about him. I'd personally known Jimmy for about four years and for me it was strange but exciting living in this market town, the antithesis of the film world and being friends with this actor who'd been in all these big films. So I got working with Jimmy on a few different projects but for various reasons they weren't going anywhere. So, as one last effort to bring his talents to the big screen, I presented him with my own script, and I had a role in it he was perfect for. It was during the second casting session at the Hub, when in walked local actor Ian Mewed. With Jimmy's death two months later, this audition turned out to be the passing of the baton. It was great to, to meet him and um, I'm, as an actor or enthusiastic film buff and acting sort of uh, person, it, I, I'm always a bit starstruck when I meet my, meet my heroes and uh, Jimmy dis didn't disappoint. He had a wonderful uh, fund of anecdotes and great theatrical stories with which I could identify completely. I think Jimmy said at the time, uh, or I was told after I'd left the room, that he said he'd devoted far too much time uh, talking to me, and I was very flattered and complimented by that because uh, we uh, we were a similar age and uh, maybe similar background, both from a military family, and um, I'd followed Jimmy's career ever since I first saw him uh, in uh, the film version of the great William Golding's book, Lord of the Flies. I, I was very, very moved by the, by the movie and, and slightly terrified as well. This is easy to say with the benefit of all these years' hindsight, but I, I did think at the time, because he was only a couple of years older than me, how great to be in a film. In a rather wonderful way, taking over from James in this movie has been like the completing of a, of a circle, or it has a kind of symmetry to it, which is really quite, uh, quite moving, and it made me all the more keen and passionate to do his memory justice and do it just the very best I could. So Jimmy died the month before we began filming. And I remember it was on the St. George's Day that we uh, had his funeral in Grantham. And it was there that I met his French daughter for the first time, Sarah. Jimmy had talked to me a lot about Sarah. I was aware that she was an actress in Paris and that she'd recently got in touch with him. However, they were never to meet in person. It was when we were having our pickup filming for Shadows that Sarah contacted me and asked if there was anything she could do as a tribute to her father. Uh, so we arranged for her to have a cameo appearance and so she came over to Sleaford to do some filming. I know he was a wonderful actor, everybody told me that, and I saw some uh, of these movies. Spy Game and uh, The Hunger with a French actress, Catherine Deneuve. And, um, Lord of the Flies, when he was 14 years old, I think. I met his friends, and he had <laughs> a lot of friends, so I, I have a lot of stories, and uh, he was a wonderful person. Everybody said me too. He was very funny, was very friendly. He liked to get out and have some drinks, <laughs> like an English do. Everybody have, has a very good memory of him, as it's... Uh, very a chance to for me to to know that because I didn't have the chance to know him. So he passed away two months before uh, after we um, we get in touch. I I understand much better who he was. Now, what was even more magical about this filming with Sarah is that we brought in one of our old friends, Oliver, who had actually acted with Jimmy in one of these unfinished film projects of ours. 
I, I remember I came home and I said to like my family and things, I'm acting with this guy who used to be in something to do with barbed wire and flowers. And my mum was like, bouquet barbed wire, bouquet barbed wire. And I thought, yeah, that's the one. And um, so she used to have like posters of him and stuff on the walls and like told all her friends like how amazing it was. Um, and I was a bit ignorant to that really. But um, yeah, it was really nice to act alongside him and we'd stay up drinking whiskey till six in the morning and he was, he turned me into a bad boy in that film, I think. He, ruined my nice boy image and I ended up just getting pissed and acting so not at the same time because I'm not very good at pissed acting but yeah so it's really nice really nice experience a really nice guy as well we did keep in touch after the film as well and we'd meet up and things and go for drinks and um, took him down to his, his local haunting ground I think uh, around here and I was always driving so bastard but um, but yeah, other, like it was yeah, it was nice to hear his stories and things and stuff he's got to say and like I was when I got a few other roles in other films and plays and things it was nice to run them by him as well. But yeah, so it's really good input from him. I wanted just to pay tribute to the great humour and the great uh, experience of Jimmy, um, just to be in the same room with him and to see uh, that characteristic uh, twinkle in his eye and uh, the laugh lines around his eyes and mouth was a great experience and uh, I'm, I'm very pleased that I had a chance to meet him uh, because uh, uh, he didn't um, live much longer than that audition, a couple of months longer, so uh, Jimmy, this is for you. I'm sure Jimmy was disheartened having ended up here, out of the limelight on his own deserted island. But on a purely selfish level, it was great for me that our paths had crossed in this filmmaking wilderness. My favourite memory of Jimmy is one evening on a film set. We all sat down after the shoot and watched Lord of the Flies with him. I believe he said it was the first time he'd watched it properly since it was out. We were treated to a live actor's commentary of the film, as he told us all his stories about the production and what was going through his mind at the time. Jimmy once lent me a documentary about a reunion of the Lord of the Flies cast, and I remember a very revealing moment in it where he's saying how, between roles, he would feel so empty sitting at home waiting for the phone to ring, the ship coming to rescue him from his island with another film or stage role for him to step into. And in the last four years of his life, it would appear that's the Jimmy I knew. Except he knew by then the phone was no longer ringing. It was just some local who was stuck in the same place.